are you planning to buy the essential phone in 2018 and use it throughout 2019 make sure you watch this review till the end if you haven't already subscribed make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notified of new videos you what's up manchi here back with another video in this video we're going to do a review of the essential phone at the price point of 330 bucks if you were lucky enough you could have got it for 250 bucks as well on amazon prime day but if you're planning to purchase the essential phone i would wait for black friday because me personally i expect some deals on the essential phone on black friday in this review we're going to look at the hardware and design the display battery the software the cameras and because i love my custom roms unlocked bootloaders and routing my android devices we also look into xta developers community support for the essential phone let's go ahead open the box and see what you get inside so you're presented with the phone itself we'll go ahead and keep it on the side for some time you have your usb type c to type c cable with the cable tie braided cable over here awesome work essential you have your 3.5 mm headphone jack usb type c to 3.5 mm headphone jack braided as well great work again from essential you have a power brick over here no essential branding at all anywhere just a silver border going all along the edge over here 27 watts fast charger in the box you also have your manuals and sim injection tool over here but i've lost them by now all right youtube let's start with the hardware you have a titanium frame on this phone ceramic back which as you can clearly see is a fingerprint magnet this phone weighs in at 185 grams there are no curved edges over here and neither on the back so when you hold this phone it's like a big block of metal which you are holding the fingerprint scanner is on the back pretty accessible no issues over there the speed is good i would say fast until you check out the fingerprint scanner on the poco f1 phone which is crazy fast so right now after using the poco f1 for a few minutes i think this fingerprint scanner is slow but yes as compared to the pixel 2 the essential phone has the same speed of unlocking your phone with the fingerprint scanner let's have a look at the bottom you have your speaker grill usb type c nano sim card tray your mic on this side you have your power button and your volume rockers never had an issue with those buttons very clicky and they work absolutely fine never had a missed click or anything like that on the top nothing on this side nothing as well essential if you are listening when you launched this phone you named it the essential phone you should have added the headphone jack just saying moving to the back you have your fingerprint scanner dual cameras again i don't understand the purpose of these two cameras over here we'll talk more about that in the camera section you have your led flash noise cancelling mic and you have your accessory ports over here the only accessory available right now is the 360 cam they have their audio DAC coming out soon it just passed through FCC so should be out any day now the essential phone does have a LED over here which is a good touch something you do not find on phones in 2018 and you do have a speaker over here now the downside of this implementation or this design is you will have dust in that speaker grill there is no way for you to avoid it it will be there as for water resistance my advice keep this phone away from water because it is only rated ip54 moving over to the display you have a 5.7 inch ips lcd display very bright very nice display over here the screen to body ratio is 84.9% at 504 ppi's gorilla glass 5 on the front the notch is there 
and in my opinion this was the best implementation of the notch when this phone was launched every other android manufacturer copied the iphone style notch essential went a different route altogether and this is what most other android manufacturers are now working on and improving it with the teardrop style notch which they have come up with best implementation of the notch hats off to essential for that and if you do not like the notch you do have the option of disabling that in developer options the problem i have with this ips lcd panel is you do not have double tap to wake so let's say i'm at work i have my phone on the table i step on the side for a moment and i come back and see that the led notification light on top over here is blinking which means i've got a notification a missed call an email a message or something right now if you had an amulet panel in there i would have just used double tap to wake and got to see what notification i have now in this case with the lcd panel i have to go ahead lift the phone and then use my fingerprint to unlock it right double tap to wake is just easy and convenient if you have the fingerprint scanner on the back i think you should use an amulet panel so that you can implement double tap to wake the other issue which you will have with this phone is getting a good tempered glass screen protector and a case combination because the screen is so close to the edge you do have some tempered glass screen protectors available but you cannot use them with a the case they will lift off from the side and I prefer to use this phone with a case because of it being a fingerprint magnet. I don't want people lifting my fingerprints off my phone and then unlocking my phone. Just joking, but yes. If you do have a tempered glass screen protector, which you know is case friendly for the essential phone, please leave a comment down below and let me know which one it is. Other than that, you have adaptive brightness on this guy. Pretty good. Works pretty nice. No complaints over there. You can use this phone in bright daylight with no visibility issues. Me personally never had an issue with that. So it's a go in that department. Next up, moving over to the battery, you have a fast charger in the box, something which is a rare commodity in the Apple community. But yes, it does come with a 27 watt fast charger out of the box. As for the screen on time, I've gotten like four to five hours of screen on time with one to two hours of calls. Again, no heavy gaming over there, so your screen on time will vary. But for a normal user, Instagram, Telegram, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Gmail, some YouTube videos, you should easily get four to five hours of screen on time. Moving on to the software. So software is where Essential just kills it. This guy is already running Android 9.0 Pi. And that is the reason I got this phone. Essential was the first company in the history of Android to roll out an Android OS update on the same day as Google. And even though I hate the notch, I decided I'll go ahead and buy the Essential phone because they rolled out Android 9.0 Pi for this guy same day within hours of google rolling out android 9.0 pi for the pixel devices hats off to essential for that as for the security updates the same holds true you get security updates the same day as google pushes them out for the pixel devices so on the software front you have nothing to complain about there have been reports of the device being jittery but i think they have fixed that now and nonetheless i mean personally i don't scroll through my timeline like this on any device or on in any app the issues related to it being jittery have been fixed fast and snappy over here now the issue which i would like to point out which i have faced is it not working fine with 5 gigahertz wi-fi it disconnects very often i've seen it lose connection to 5 gigahertz wi-fi and I'm stubborn, I refuse to connect this guy to my 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi because it is slow for me. So it does disconnect and goes to LTE even when there's a strong 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal which I think is an issue. The other issue is about T-Mobile network strength. There have been people who have been complaining for quite some time about bad 
signal reception on this guy with the T-Mobile network. Me personally, I've never faced that issue and no one has ever told me that you might have a drop call or something like that or they called me and my phone was not reachable. Never happened to me. If it happens to you, I suggest you go ahead and get a T-Mobile sales spot. They give it to you for free if you plan on buying this phone and you live in a place where the T-Mobile signal strength is not that good. So other than that, the GPS locks perfectly fine. Never had an issue with that. And as far as T-Mobile signal strength issues go, I think that is a hardware issue which Essential cannot fix. They've done their best, I think. Tried everything, pushed out multiple updates to the camera. So I'm pretty sure even though they don't acknowledge it, the T-Mobile signal issues which have been reported are a hardware issue. Moving over to the cameras. Now, if you plan on buying this phone, my advice, go ahead and install the Google camera app as soon as you buy this phone. The camera to API is enabled by default, so you don't have to root, unlock the bootloader or do anything else to install the Google camera. Just download the APK, install it, you should be good to go. The stock camera app is good. It has improved a lot ever since the release, but in my personal opinion, the Google camera app takes good pictures. This phone does lack OIS. And again, essential, I'm not sure what on earth were you thinking when you launched this guy for 700 bucks with no OIS. At 330 bucks, I won't complain of OIS missing, but yes, at 700 bucks, I won't buy a phone which has no OIS, plain and simple. The other thing is, I don't understand your second sensor over here just to take black and white photos. I mean, I can use an Instagram filter or an app to do that. You don't have to add a secondary camera just to do that. The other issue I have with this design or the camera is when I take pictures sometimes, so you hold your phone like this, right? So if you're holding a your phone like this, you see how your finger is hanging over the top over here on the top left corner, this guy over here. So let me go ahead and try to replicate it. So let's say I'm trying to take a picture with the rear camera. I'll hold my phone like this. So if my finger has a bit of a hang over here, sometimes in the night when the flash goes on, my finger is obstructing the light of the flash, which is kind of a pain and you do have to take the picture again. So which is why I think this guy over here should have been over here and you could have moved the camera modules a bit on this side or just moved the flash down here. But the flash over here, I have to be very careful when I'm taking pictures in the night so as to make sure that my finger will not obstruct the light of the flash. The camera sensor on the back, the main camera sensor is 13 megapixels and it is capable of recording at 4K. So that is an advantage. And moving over to the front camera sensor, you have a 8 megapixel sensor, which is also capable of recording at 4K, which is a double advantage because there aren't many smartphones which let you record 4K from the front camera. The camera as the weakest department on the essential phone at a $700 price point. At a 330 bucks price point, these cameras are good enough. Good enough for your day-to-day -day shooting, good enough for your Instagram pictures, your Facebook profile pictures, your streaming, and all those things. Now, moving on to the XTA developers support. Essential does provide you with fast boot images on their website and the zip file to side load in case you want to do that. Now the problem I have over here is that this cable which came with the phone essential says you should not use this cable to flash software on the essential phone. Well then why the hell on earth did you include this cable? You should have included a USB-A to USB-C cable which I can use because it's a pain to flash a factory firmware on this guy using fast boot. You have to search for a cable which works pretty good. My OK cables don't work with this guy. I have to use the anchor cables. So 
anyone looking to flash custom ROMs on this guy, make sure you buy the anchor cable if you have to go back to factory firmware, works best with the essential phone. You do have custom ROMs available, official tour recovery available, root works absolutely fine. I think this guy will go a long way when it comes to custom ROM support on XGA developers. So what is the bottom line with this guy? Who should buy it and who should not buy it? Let's start with people who should buy it. If you're looking for the latest Android update, latest security updates super fast, this phone will get Android Q. You're looking for stock Android experience. You're looking for a phone which has global LTE bands. And you're looking for a phone which is the best bang for buck right now then this is the phone for you. The design is modern as well, so doesn't look outdated like my Pixel 2. Pretty decent design. The chin, I agree, is big, but not bad at all. Now, who should not buy this phone? You should not buy this phone if you're looking for the best camera in the world. That title is taken by the Pixel phones for now, so you need to invest more buy a pixel phone you should not buy this phone if you're looking for a headphone jack this phone doesn't have a headphone jack it is a deal breaker for some people if 128 gb of storage is not enough for you then you should not buy this phone because there is no micro sd card slot if water resistance is a must for you then you should not buy this phone if you record a lot of videos on your phone and you need ois then you should not buy this phone because this guy over here doesn't have OIS. So that's it for this review YouTube. I hope my review will help you in making a decision as to whether you should buy the essential phone in 2018 or not and whether you want to use this phone in 2019 or not. Likes, shares and subscribes are appreciated. Feedback and comment more than welcome. See you when I see you.